Boosting your Raspberry Pi's performance is a breeze. Seriously, it's easier than ordering pizza online. But before you decide to do this, just know that too high of an overclock might result in your Raspberry Pi being a little unstable. In fact, you may either see it immediately crash or refuse to even boot up. But in the video description, I have listed safe overclocking speeds for your convenience. And also, if you don't want to risk losing any of your data, I have another video where you can learn how to clone or back up your Raspberry Pi. And first things first, if you're connected via SSH, great. Otherwise, you can open up the terminal by hitting Control Alt T. Easy peasy, right? We need to edit a config file that's located in one of two locations. If you have a Raspberry Pi 5, it's in slash boot slash firmware. Otherwise, it should be located in slash boot. And so with that being said, go ahead and type in sudo nano dash w and then the path that we just talked about slash config.txt and then hit enter. This is going to open up a configuration file that we need to tweak. Go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file. And if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, start a new line and then type in this DT per RAM option. This command tells your Pi that it's okay for it to use PCIe Gen 3 instead of Gen 2. It means faster speeds and who doesn't love speed? And next, at the end of the file on a new line, type in arm underscore freq equals and then type in a cpu clock speed that's safe for your raspberry pi so for example if you have a raspberry pi 5 you can safely bump this up to 2800 okay now it's the gpu's turn to shine if you have a raspberry pi that supports it so on yet another new line type in gpu underscore freq equals and then a number that your Raspberry Pi considers safe. So for example, if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, you can safely crank this up to 900. Graphics, here we come. If you're feeling good about these changes, go ahead and hit Control O to save your work and then Control X to exit out of the editor. And now the last step is to reboot your Raspberry Pi. Then just sit back, relax, and watch your Raspberry Pi hopefully perform a lot better. And by the way, those CPU and GPU numbers that I suggested are pretty conservative, but they should give you a nice little performance boost. And if you're feeling a lot more adventurous than that, feel free to play around with those settings and throw in slightly higher numbers. From what I've heard for the Raspberry Pi 5, some folks have had success pushing the CPU up to 2900 megahertz and the GPU up to 1000 megahertz. It's like giving your Raspberry Pi a huge turbo boost. Oh, and there's one more thing. Your results may vary depending on how lucky you got in the silicone lottery. Yeah, it's a thing. But hey, that's all part of the fun, right? But again, if you're unsure about overclocking speeds for your Raspberry Pi, take a look at some of the safe and tested numbers that I threw in the video description. But otherwise, go ahead and give those higher frequencies a try and see how much power you can squeeze out of your Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching, and for more on Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.